Alrighty. So, if you read this section at uh, lines 10b through 11b, where Socrates talks about the leading and the led and the carrying and the carried and all that kind of stuff, it seems almost incomprehensible. And indeed, it seems like he's doing a lot of double talk, speaking in riddles. But really, once you understand the logic of it, he's giving three examples of the same logic in hopes that um, Euthyphro will be able to understand the point that he's trying to make. And the point that he's trying to make goes back to the question of is piety pious because the gods love it or do the gods love it because it's pious? So the relationship, here's, here's sort of the deal. So if we're going to say that um, we're going to talk about piety, right? And if we say that one of the things that defines piety is that the gods love it. What we have to understand is the gods' love is secondary to the nature of piety. Because first you have to have the definition of piety, and then the gods' love. So the gods' love is only an effect. <clears throat> in other words, it doesn't, um, it doesn't tell us about um, the uh, nature of piety. So in other words, if I were to say, you know, what is a dog? And I say that I love them. Whoops. I love them. Well, this may be a true fact about the dog, but it doesn't tell us anything about what a dog is. So my love of the dog is nothing but an effect and it's uh, of secondary significance. So the logic of when he says a thing carried or a thing carrying, a thing seeing or a thing seen, it comes down to this. Imagine any given thing. Okay, here is a tree. And here is a guy looking at the tree. Now, in this relationship between the seer, this guy would be the seer, and this would be a thing seen. So the deal is, as this guy is looking at the tree, it is in fact being seen, right? Um, so we could conceivably, if someone says, you know, well, what is that, right? We could answer, I suppose, it is a thing being seen well I mean yeah it is being seen that is true right so it's true about it but it doesn't tell us anything about the what because if you ask what is that the answer is not a thing being seen the answer is tree likewise if you're holding something in your hand right here's a cup in your hand right And you could say, well, you know, what is that thing? Well, since you're carrying it, that's supposed to be a hand. Since you're carrying it, you could call that a thing carried. And if someone said, hey, what is that? You'd say, why it is a thing carried. Now, you wouldn't be saying something false, but you also wouldn't be answering the question because if I ask you what it is, you would say, well, it is a cup. Now, it is being carried, sure, but that carrying is secondary to the fact that it is a cup. It's a state of being that tells you something else about the cup, just like the tree being seen, that doesn't tell you anything about the whatness. So in that uh, episode where he talks about the seeing and the seen, the leading and the led, the logic is that a definition should be based on information that tells us what a thing is, not secondary information about the thing. That's what that whole deal means. And what he's hoping in that convoluted thing is that Euthyphro would slow down and stop and ask what Socrates is trying to get at. Because once you understand this as we've been talking about, maybe it's not so easy to see the distinction. It, it becomes more easy to see the distinction. And perhaps, you know, that can be the key to unlock that passage. However, 
um, if we don't really stop and pay attention and just let it kind of go in one ear out the other, it really becomes meaningless. And the thing that is being missed here is the difference between essential information and accidental information. In other words, some things are essential for a definition. Some things are only accidental. In other words, secondary. And that's always trying to show them.